I have taught taking dental x-rays for over 20 years, and I have found that the way I now teach and the method I'm going to demonstrate today is the simplest for the new person just starting to take x-rays to understand how to get diagnostic x-rays. A diagnostic x-ray, all it needs to have is to have two to three millimeters of bone around the apex of the root and the level of the alveolar bone. You do not have to have a perfect x-ray. As long as we can see those two things, we have a diagnostic x-ray. So the way that I like to have people learn is to actually to place the animal in sternal recumbency and we can take the entire maxilla while the animal is in sternal recumbency. In order to have this really work well, I like to have the entire maxilla parallel to the table. So if I had a dog here, I would put a couple towels underneath his chin so that that entire maxilla is now level with the table. And then I will go ahead and place my sensor so it is flat to the table for every shot in the maxilla. So I also like to have my sensor right at the very, or the teeth right on the very edge of the sensor because I don't care if I see the crown. I really don't need the crown on my x-rays, just the root and the level of the alveolar bone. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. If my sensor tries to tip a little bit like it may on the palate, just put a piece of gauze between the palate and the sensor to keep it nice and level. The other added bonus to the way I teach it now is I get rid of the dreaded bisecting angle technique that puts so much fear in so many people over the years. And I use, we're still using the bisecting angle technique, but we're really making it very easy. All of our systems have angles on them, or most of our systems, there's a few that don't, but they already have the angles. So this is 90 degrees, and this is going to be at about 60 degrees. So we can go ahead and use these angles as we move throughout the mouth to go ahead and get good x-rays, already creating that bisecting angle technique. So with 60 degrees approximately high and through the eye, I'm gonna be able to get, and coming just a little bit caudal, I'm gonna be able to get that first and second molar isolated in our larger animals. When I switch to doing the uh, fourth premolar, I might move my sensor just a wee bit forward so my fourth premolar is right on the sensor. I go to about 50 degrees and shoot straight at that fourth premolar and I'll be able to go ahead and get those without any problem. Then I continue to pull my sensor forward so I can get my premolars. Those will be taken at 45 degrees still high, always remember you're shooting at the roots, not at the crowns of the tooth. Now the canine tooth can be quite difficult to get because it, we only see one third of that tooth and two thirds of that tooth is up into the nasal area of the, the dog. So we can do a really quick little trick that helps us get that dental x-ray is to use your hands. Okay, we have L's on both of our hands. So we have a way to, to make this work. The first thing I'll do is depending on the size of the animal, how big that canine is, I'm gonna probably put that sensor on the animal's palate. That apex of his canine root is way back in his, uh, above his second maxillary premolar. So it is very far back. So I will take my finger like an L, run it off the midline, my index finger off the midline, and just kinda of have my thumb drape over his eye. I'll set my system at 70 degrees and come in kitty corner and right into that area of the palm of my hand. And I am aiming right at that apex of that canine tooth. Another trick that you can use to help with this x-ray is most of our systems will also have these little kind of crosshatch lines. And if that line now lines up straight to my canine, it is actually a very good way for me to go ahead and get that x-ray at all times. When it comes to the incisors, I can usually get all six teeth in one view. I didn't mention that the goal of full series of x-rays is all the teeth in as few x-rays as possible. So I'm going to bring my sensor up so that my incisors are right at the edge of the, um, right at the edge of the sensor. And I'm gonna come in at 45 degrees and just shoot right at those teeth. Okay, that'll be a very easy way for me to go ahead and get all of those incisors in one view. 
But as you can see, I'm still coming up very high because of the, dis the length of those roots. And then I would simply just walk around the other half of the maxilla. Now when we take the x-rays of the mandible of the dog, we want to go ahead and rotate the dog over into dorsal recumbency. And when we do that, we'll put a little bit of a towel underneath his neck so that we have that mandible as parallel to the table as possible. Now when we start getting our back teeth from our third molar to our fourth premolar, we can do what we traditionally call a parallel shot. That means that our sensor is parallel to the, gum or to the jaw. So as you can see, I have my sensor in here. Now one thing a lot of people will, uh, will struggle getting this x-ray, and part of that is they go too deep. And when you do that, you're actually missing the third molar. So with first view of this, I go straight back into the mouth so that I can kind of see the sensor above the teeth. And if I need to, I can just simply use a piece of 4x4 four four gauze to kind of push that sensor back and keep it into the correct location for what I need. Then all I'm going to do is take my tube head and it is going to be at 90 degrees or perpendicular to that sensor and that will get that x-ray each and every time. Then I will move the sensor forward and a little deeper into that sulcus between the jaw and the tongue, and I'll reshoot it again and get the fourth premolar and the first molar in the next view. Again, 90 degrees or perpendicular to the sensor. Now when it comes to getting the rest of the uh, premolars on the mandible, we really aren't able to get our sensor down in there to get the P1 and the P2 just because the sensors are wide and the dog's jaw doesn't allow it. So we have to go back to that dreaded bisecting angle technique, but we can make it very easy. So as I said in the, in the earlier, in the maxilla we don't, or we go in high and through the eye, but with the mandible we want to go ahead and remember don't fight the tongue the tongue will usually win every battle. So it is perfectly acceptable to go ahead and put the tongue between the teeth and the sensor when you take an x-ray. And you can shoot right through it, it's soft tissue, it will not cause an issue. But I'm gonna go ahead now, put my sensor in the mouth so it again is parallel to the table. Bring it up, make sure that the teeth I want are covered on there. I'll bring my sensor to 60 degrees following that line of the jaw, take that x-ray and I will get my first, second, and third premolars on this x-ray. Now when it comes to doing the canines and incisors, remember my goal is all the teeth in as few x-rays as possible. I want to go ahead and many, many dogs, I'm able to get the canines and incisors in one view mandibular canines and incisors. However, not everybody listens to the rule book or reads the textbooks. So at times I may need to go ahead and get my canine apexes by themselves. So this is a little bit bigger dog and that canine apex for the um, mandible or mandibular canines is usually just over the second premolar. So it's way back in this general area. So I'm going to put my sensor back, come up to about 70 degrees, and basically shoot right at those two apex of those roots. Then I can pull my sensor forward, go ahead to 45 degrees, and shoot my incisors. How many x-rays it's going to take for your dog is going to depend on how big your animal is and how many x-rays it's going to take to get all of them in. After I've done that, I simply rotate and do the other side of the dog and get all of those teeth. All of the teeth in as few x-rays as possible. Taking a full series of x-rays on a cat used to be really challenging. However, with digital x-rays now, it can make life really, really quite easy. I do my cats just like I do my dogs with my cats and sternal recumbency for the maxilla, dorsal recumbency for the mandible. My cat is in sternal recumbency. I want to have that maxillary arch as parallel to the table as possible. So if I have um, a cat on the table, I'm going to put a few towels underneath his head so that arch is as parallel as possible. And the really cool thing with digital is I can go ahead and put their sensor in their mouth and I can pretty much get all of the maxilla without moving my sensor at all.
or if it is, it's just a wee little bit. So I have my sensor in here. He's just flat into his mouth. The sensor still is flat also, just like it was with the dog. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start. Now, in the, old, in the days of film, we really had to worry about him missing that zygomatic arch because it would show up so bold on our x-rays. But with digital, we can usually shoot right through it. So my first x-ray, I'm going to take the cheek teeth, what we call the, the P3, P4, first molar, or first molar. And I'm going to go ahead and set my sense or my uh, tube head at about 37 and a half degrees, usually between 35 and 40 degrees. And again, I'm still coming up high and through the eye. And I kind of follow the line of the jaw just a little bit. And I shoot that x-ray and I'm going to go ahead and get the first molar, fourth premolar, third premolar, and second premolar on the maxilla. Then, I bring my tube head around a little bit, and I haven't had to move my sensor at all. I set this to approximately 50 degrees, and I just aim right at the medial canthus of the cat's eye. So I'm coming in kitty corner, medial canthus of that cat's eye. I shoot the next x-ray, and I get the canine isolated. Then I come straight from the front, 45 degrees basically put the kitty's tube or nose right in the tube head and shoot that x-ray and I'm going to get those incisors. And then I just walk around the other side of the mouth and finish that off. I cannot get both the canines and the incisors from the maxilla of a cat on the same view. The canine teeth will be superimposed over the cheek teeth and we won't be able to have a diagnostic x-ray. When I take the mandible of the cat, I go ahead and rotate the cat into dorsal recumbency, again with the towel underneath the neck or even the shoulders so I can have that mandible now as parallel to the table as possible. When I was taking x-rays with film, it was very easy for me to go ahead and put my sensor in the mouth like this and shoot a perpendicular shot straight at and get all of the cheek teeth. However, with our sensors being thick and not very flexible anymore, when I do that shot, I'm more than likely going to miss the third premolar, which is, as I like to refer to, the poster child for tooth resorption. is usually the first tooth affected by tooth resorption. So I want to make sure I get that in the x-ray. So I'm going to go ahead with my animal in dorsal recumbency, have that sensor flat in the mouth again. Remember, don't fight the tongue. The tongue always wins. So when a cat, put that tongue between the teeth and the sensor. Okay, and I can simply set my tube head at 60 degrees. Okay, and I can come in following that line of the jaw and shoot that x-ray and get all three cheek teeth. The really nice thing with cat x-rays is now I'm already in position to do my canines and incisors, which I always get in one view on a cat, and I don't need to change my view or my uh, angle. I come straight in, 60 degrees, I have my canines and incisors in one view, and then I simply rotate around to the third side and take that x-ray. Um, in another 60 degrees, and I have all of the mandibular teeth on a cat.